Do you know how long you can hold your breath? And if not, why isn't it essential knowledge and a thing you're trying to make as long as possible? So just thinking about this, as we're going through the current situation all over the world, there's a lot of things with covering your airways. And I'm, I'm someone who goes out and I walk and I jog and I sprint and I do things like that. And just having the covering when you're running, just for this alone, like I'm saying there's other things around it, I understand why they're saying you should wear masks, because it's protecting other people from you in case you're infected. But when you're running, you're actually containing the carbon dioxide that you're exhaling and then when you're breathing in. So it reduces the amount that you can actually sprint and you can actually recover with the actual oxygen being taken in. So sometimes when I'm running, especially when there's no people around, I'll at least take down the actual thing off of my nose so I can at least breathe in through my nose, especially when you're catching back the air. So there is a limitation in that just in general exercise. And there have been things that have changed and said you're not really going to infect people as much if you're in the outdoors. But I understand the reasons of why. I understand why doctors wear the medical masks. It's not so they don't catch something that's inside a patient they may be doing surgery on. It's so they don't expirate and have something from their body enter the insides of the actual patient. When you're in a place where there's sick people, I understand in certain cultures, that's what they've been doing. Most, mostly Asian cultures have been doing this. If they have a cold, if they have certain symptoms, they wear masks. Some people do it fashionably, but in general, it's like if you're ill. I understand when you're working in like a level four lab, like the one in Wuhan, you, t you wear those hazmat suits because in that case, you're actually not trying to catch anything that's out there. If there happens to be something that drops or some particulars, you don't want to actually get infected with that thing and then go outside. So there's many reasons for why to wear the mask. Simply just covering, even if you just cover with a net, it's doing something. Even if you just cover it with one stick across your mouth, that's going to reduce some of the particulars. So anything covering your mouth, I guarantee... I completely accept, reduces the chances of things inside your mouth going outside into the air. Now we can discuss the actual intricacies of how much and the effect that this is actually doing. But coming back to this, what if you were told that, for example, breathing four times a minute raises your chance of actually infecting people a hundredfold versus three times a minute? And then it was like, unless you can actually breathe less than three times a minute, you're not allowed to go outside unless you have this special kind of mask that retails for like $100. That's what you have to have to be outside on a regular basis. Or you have to be able to breathe less than three times a minute and you have to test that. Would you, would you be cool with that? I'm just thinking like, how, how long? Wh why don't you know how long you can hold your breath? I think I did this when I was a kid. Like, there was like two minutes or something. It was a little over two minutes. And of course, when, if you swim, if you're a swimmer, you probably know this a bit more. But how, how, how long can you hold your breath? I'm going to test it again after this. But I'm going to read this thing, How to Train to Hold Your Breath Longer Safely. This is from Healthline. Okay, so most people can hold their breath for somewhere between 30, to 30 seconds to up to two minutes. Why try holding your breath? It's not a necessary or immediate everyday benefit other than a conversational icebreaker. But holding your breath can save your life in certain situations, like if you fall off a boat. The record for holding your breath may be hard to top. According to Guinness World Records, Aliex Segura Vendrel of Barcelona, Spain, set the bar high at 24 minutes and 3 seconds in February 2016. Let's get into what's happening in your body when you hold your breath, what, what possible side effects can happen if you don't do it right, and what benefits you can get from out of holding your breath longer. This is, this is just an aside, but I was just thinking, this is something that, why don't you know this? this is, it seems like it should be some basic knowledge. We just take it for granted. Because I think ever since we're born, it's just, it's just something you do. If you're listening to this, you can breathe. Congratulations. You've been doing it. And we just take it for granted. It's just a process that our body does. And just in the whole starting process of this whole situation the world is going to, it was just it was clear that most people don't really understand just the basic process that happens when you breathe. And it's so key to life. And just seeing people just welcome the changes and adjustments into how and where you can breathe is something that's been somewhat concerning to me. So back to the reading. What happens when you hold your breath? Here's what happens to your body when you hold your breath. The times are approximate. Number one, zero to 30 seconds. You might feel relaxed as, you're, as you close your eyes and tune out the world around you. 30 seconds to two minutes. 
you'll start to feel uncomfortable pain in your lungs. The most common misconception about holding your breath is that you're running out of air. You're not. Learning to slow your breathing and increase intake during inhalation is part of this. But holding your breath is difficult and dangerous because carbon dioxide is building up in your blood from not exhaling. Number three, two minutes to three minutes. Your stomach starts to rapidly convulse and contract. This is because your diaphragm is trying to force you to take a breath. Number four, three to five minutes. You'll begin to feel lightheaded as CO2 builds up in builds up builds to higher levels, higher and higher levels. It pushes the oxygen out of your bloodstream and reduces the amount of oxygenated blood traveling to your brain. Number five, five to six minutes. Your body will start to shake as your muscles begin to uncontrollably contract. This is when holding your breath can become dangerous. Number six, six minutes and longer. You'll black out. Your brain badly needs oxygen, so it knocks you unconscious so your automatic breathing mechanisms will kick back in. If you're underwater, you'll probably inhale water into your lungs, which is life-threatening. Now, this one, I had a separate video about this some time back where I was just talking about certain behaviors that people do it may look harmful, but you have to understand that most people who are doing things, there is something in their mind that makes them think that action they're doing is somehow going to extend their life even a second longer than not doing that action. My example was when you, the video was called When to Stand Up, or the initial blog I wrote was When to Stand Up in a pool surrounded by machine guns and flamethrowers. Like if you're put in a pool and you're told to like duck down and you see like because somebody has machine guns and flamethrowers all around the side and they turn them on, you duck under the water, you're looking up, you're seeing the flames, you're seeing the machine guns, blah, blah, blah. In general, in general, you you will get to a point, here they say maybe it's about five to six minutes, you will get to the point maybe before you black out or maybe you'll black out and you'll just conversely just float to the top. But your body will stand up because you'll think, if I stay underwater for a second longer, I'm going to die from holding my breath, from lack of oxygen, from lack of the CO2 buildup. So I'd rather stand up and even catch a split second more of life, even though that's going to be flamethrowers and machine guns to my head right after I stand up, because it's just, I have to do this other thing to live. So sometimes when you see somebody who's doing something that seems destructive, I think an effective way to deal with it is to try and identify what thing do they think is worse than not doing the thing that they're doing. Okay, back to the reading. Side effects of holding your breath. Holding your breath too long can have some side effects, including low heart rate from lack of oxygen, CO2 buildup in your bloodstream, nitrogen narcosis, a dangerous buildup of nitrogen gases in your blood that can make you feel disoriented or inebriated, common among deep sea divers. Decompression sickness, which occurs when nitrogen in your blood forms bubbles in your bloodstream instead of clearing out the, uh, of your blood when water pressure decreases, called the bends among divers. Loss of consciousness or blacking out. Pulmonary, pulmonary edema, when fluid builds up in your lungs. Alveolar hemorrhage, or bleeding in your lungs. Lung injury that can lead to total lung collapse. Complete loss of blood flow to the heart which can cause your heart to stop pumping, cardiac arrest, buildup of dangerous reactive uh, oxygen species, ROS, which happens due to long periods of low oxygen, then breathing oxygen back in high levels, which can damage DNA. Wow, that's, that sucks. Brain damage from a protein called S100B that breaks out from your bloodstream into your brain through the blood-brain barrier, which when your cells are damaged. And one more thing about this current situation that the world is going to, I think part of why it's been so global is once I think it was told or known that this is something that heart, hurts your lungs. It hurts, 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 heart. I'm trying to say heart and hurt. Hurt. It hurts your lungs, not hearts. It, it hurts your lungs. And people think of other things. Oh, if it was something that hurt your skin or hurt your teeth or hurt your, even your brain, I don't think. But I think just the fact that it affects your lungs, your breathing, may have been something that made it actually more. So maybe we are, it's something we take for granted, but it's something we, we understand. We need to breathe to keep living. So if it's actually affecting your lungs, I think that's something that really could get people's minds on it. Okay, so back to the reading. Let's try to finish this off. There's two more sections. Three more sections. Can you die from holding your breath? 
Yes, but not if you're above water. When you black out, your body automatically starts breathing again. Your lungs will gasp for air since you're programmed to inhale and exhale, even if you're unconscious, like when you sleep. If you're underwater, the gas for air may let in huge vo- a huge volume of water. Inhaling water is, isn't always fatal. If you're resuscitated by CPR or have the water pumped out of your lungs by emergency responders. But in most cases, blacking out underwater from holding your breath is deadly. Holding breath benefits. Holding your breath as well as generally improving breathing and lung function has useful potential life-saving benefits, including increasing lifespan by preserving the health of stem cells, possible regeneration of tissue in the brain to preserve brain function. This is theoretical in humans, though. Studies have only been done in salamanders. Let's do some more studies on humans. I want to know about that one. Increasing resistance to bacterial infections, learning how to make yourself feel relaxed, how to hold your breath longer underwater. If you're interested in holding your breath longer, be sure to go slowly. Use common sense. Stop and breathe normally if you're feeling dizzy or have any symptoms of oxygen deprivation. Here's a step-by-step guide on how to guide yourself to hold your breath longer. Number one, learn how to take a deep, full breath. This involves your belly moving up and down rather than your shoulders and chest. A full, deep inhalation usually takes about 20 seconds before you exhale. Do exercises to, number two, do exercises to increase your lung capacity. Try box breathing or diaphragmic breathing. Number three, learn to hold your deep breaths according to CO2 static apnea tables. Often used by freedivers, this practice consists of holding your breath for one minute and then resting by breathing normally for 90 seconds. Then repeating that hold for another minute. You then gradually reduce your normal breathing rest by 15 seconds each time. Number four, learn to store oxygen by following oxygen tables. It consists of holding your breath for one minute, breathing normally for two minutes, and then increasing how long you hold your breath by 15 seconds between each rest, which remains two minutes each time. Number five, alternate between CO2 static apnea and oxygen table exercises each day. Take a few hours of your off between each exercise. Number six, gradually increase the amount of time you hold your breath in your oxygen exercises by 15 seconds in- increments. Don't rush this part. Hold your breath until you start to feel symptoms like lightheadedness. Increase your times as you feel safe and comfortable. Number seven, stay still. Moving uses oxygen in your blood, so staying still when you hold your breath preserves the oxygen you're holding in. You can also try to slow your heart rate using vagal maneuvers, or vagal, vagal maneuvers. So the takeaway, holding your breath isn't just a pool, a pool party trick. It can save your life in certain situations and may have other physiological benefits. If you'd like to learn how to hold your breath longer, don't rush into it. It can be harmful or deadly if, done, if not done with safety in mind. Take your time and try different techniques to see what works for you. So that's it for my shorty series where I take short thoughts and then I expand on them in video form. And sometimes I go online and I look for more research and information and think about the things. And I'm going to be practicing some of these things. I'd like to see if I can get my breath holding to above average. If it says it's supposed to be 30 seconds or that it is 30 to 2 minutes, I'd like to get to around two and a half minutes, two and a half minutes maybe. What was what's the actual thing here? Let's let's see the actual things that we're saying that are going to happen to your body when this happens. I'm not getting to the point where I'm like, chatting. okay, two and a half minutes to three minutes. Your stomach starts to rapidly convulse and contract as it pours your diaphragm. Yeah, I think I'd like to get to two and a half minutes maybe, and then uh, and then we'll see that maybe three minutes, push three minutes of the feeling lightheaded. I'd, I'd like to see that. Then I'd like to maybe get to a point where at least two and a half movement minutes with slight body movements and exertions. So if you ever get to a situation where like a car goes off a road and into the water, have two and a half minutes to kind of unbuckle my belt, try to like jimmy the door open, try to like swim back up to the top of the, the, to to the surface of the water, something. I just, I just want something practical. And I think if I can get it to two and a half minutes without just passing out or just lightheadedness so much or just too many of the whole convulsions and things like that, then I think that would be a good enough place where I can be like, yeah, I'm kind of prepared. I'm, I'm in, a, in a comfortable enough position to, to fight the actual situations where I would have to hold my breath. So let me know what you think about this. Let me know if you know how long you can hold your breath. Let me know if you think it's something that you actually look into now that you, this question has come up. And uh, what other processes or are there any times, actually, that's interesting. Are there any times where you found that you had to hold your breath? And this was useful. 
And what do you think about that initial question I asked? What if they said you had to be able to breathe at a certain breath level, three breaths a minute, no more than three breaths a minute, otherwise you're not allowed to go out unless you have this $100 mask. $100 all around the world. So even if you live in like a third world developing country slum, if you're not breathing less than three minutes, three breaths a minute, you're not allowed to leave your, your shanty unless you have this $100 mask. What, what would that take if there's no vaccine to this? Would you, would you approve of that? Let me know what you think. Till next time, like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Links to a merchandise store somewhere around here. Subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. I appreciate you taking your time. Till next one, goodbye.